talked about data, we've talked about reports. The final piece of this puzzle, if you really want to get your teams to program and plan inside of Dropus, is they have to have the visual aspects from Dropus in the database. And if they can't do that, well, then there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a link uh, in the chain. And so what we're going to talk about here is I'm going to go into Revit. I'm going to go into the, the Dropus tab here. And there's a button right here that says Upload to IFC. Now, all IFC is is a read-only version of the Revit model. It's an open source platform um, that is standard across the BIM, BIM world, and it's basically taking the BIM model and it's going to export that out. And there, notice there's no settings. It exports it and uploads it into the Dropus server by simply clicking the button. And once that's done, and I've already done it, so we're not going to do it, and you go into here, and we're going to go back to the home screen, and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to turn on that viewer, and here it is. And of course, I think it has disconnected. So what we're going to do during my my demonstrations, we're going to reconnect the IFC viewer. There we go. And we're going to pull it out so you can get a bigger view of this. And we're going to talk about how we can start to filter data. So right now we have the dental department selected and it's isolating or showing all the rooms in that dental department. If I wanted to go to the janitorial department, uh, and again, because of my demo and the kink I had before with the logs, what I'm going to do really quickly is completely close out. And you're going to also see how quickly it is to jump out of Dropus and back in again. And we're going to jump back in right now. And it's going to pop up that login screen again. Right here. And once that opens up, it's going to open up under the home screen. And what I'm going to do is just reconnect to the IFC model. And then we'll show it again. So we'll click on the rooms here. And there it's already, it's already trying to open that up, but it wants me to connect. So I have to just hit reconnect. And we're going to click on the dental department. And there we go. We isolated the rooms in the dental department. Here I'm going to click on the janitor's department. And notice the gray boxes. It's isolated in the janitor's closet. I'm going to go to the administration department. It's isolated the administration department. If I go back to that dental department and I click on one of these rooms, it's going to isolate what room it is that I'm talking about and show me the properties on it. And this is visualizing across three Revit models in one location. If I double click on that, it's going to zoom me into that room. If I click on any one of these pieces of equipment, I can pull up the item data on that piece of equipment. If I click this one-to-one -one check, and that's going to open up a room here. Now what I'm going to do is dock this so that we can get a better view. Uh, we'll put it right here. This is going to be modeled down here. This is going to do that same variation check of what's in the database versus what's in the model. We're going to pull this over a little bit here. You'll see that right here. And so it's saying where we have any issues. So there's two in the database. There's two in the model. We're good to go. Um, here we've got an issue. There's two in the database that we're supposed to have. There's only one in the model. And so it's saying that we have an issue here. Vice versa here. And so this is, this is a very powerful tool if we want to start to go through on somebody who doesn't have access to Revit or maybe is intimidated to use a powerful modeling tool like that. Uh, they can use a powerful database tool, but since it's, it, it's the interface similar to Excel, it's much easier to, to understand. It's also much easier to mass edit rooms. I can sort my rooms and I can make changes across an entire department of all room types at once. Um, and I can select and make those changes. I can see the variation counts across all those different rooms. Notice that all these rooms are selected. And now we're going through here. Um, additionally, if we want to go back all the way into the early programming and planning, I'm going to make this a, a little bit bigger. We're going to kind of pull this over and pull this up. Um, I can go through here. I'm going to click on the project right here. And we're going to go through. And notice it's going to select all of the rooms right here. And although I did that, it's going to go through. And I can see the, the areas in here. Where is my gross versus net, my gross net factors across departments? And because we can connect to Revit areas, the actual tracing of it, for the first time, we can validate our gross net factors. Are they real? At a planning level, when I'm saying the gross net factor is, is 1.25, is it really? Or is it 1.255 or 1.26? Um, and that starts to become a very, very uh, effective tool of making sure that we're developing and designing more efficient buildings. Um, so I, I thank you for your guys' time. Um, I've gone through a very big walkthrough of Dorofus.